This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. This is Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Texas Life. I am so delighted to introduce you to Amy Faulkner and her doctor, Dr. Carl Chekmachian. And uh, your story is one of perseverance and a survivor and just dogged determination because you have received what nobody wants to hear, and that's a diagnosis of cancer. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. First, I know you're a school teacher. You've been teaching for many years at China Spring. Yes, ma'am. I'm a school teacher. I've been teaching for 20, this is my 21st year. Um, I'm also a mother of two wonderful children. My daughter is 22, and she just started this week her first real job. She's a NICU nurse in Houston. Oh, my goodness. And so she's really excited about that. And then my son is a sophomore in college, and he's a football player at Lamar University. So um, just kind of a new stage in life with them both being adults. Yeah, um, yeah and just... Um, but yeah, my, my job as a teacher, and I spend a lot of time grading papers and preparing <laughs> for my school day, um, but I love it. I love yeah. being a teacher. And your husband also an educator. Yes. As well. He's, he's a superintendent. superintendent. So yeah, our feels like our whole lives have just been in education at, <laughs> at the school. That's where we live, yeah. pretty much. But some years ago, you were dealt quite a surprise, and that was a diagnosis of cervical cancer. Yes. And uh, that's where Dr. Chekmajian, who's with Texas Oncology, comes into the picture. Um, how, how was it found? Was it just a regular pap smear? Um, it, it was a pap smear, but I wouldn't say it was regular. I really had just been experiencing some trouble, some irregular bleeding, and I really thought I decided to diagnose myself and that I just wanted to go and talk about having a hysterectomy. I thought that would solve my problems. So I went in they did the exam, and, and really while I was in the office, the doctor told me that he, you know, they saw a problem, and he told me that day that he really thought it would be cancer, and I was shocked. I mean, are you Right. Even, you were, you were never, 40. That I was mean, not on my radar no. at all, and so I left with my head spinning, and they actually called me um, from that office the next day at school and told me that it was um, cancer, and so that kind of started this journey. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you got in with a specialist, you know about how how long did that take, uh, Doctor? Um, well, Doctor C, do you know? Can I call you that? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> how no, did I mean, you call so, that? so I think you probably saw a gynecologic oncologist first, correct? Well, actually, it was just at the. It was a specialist that I went to for that exam. But pretty much once they called and gave me that diagnosis, I actually my best friend from from elementary, middle school, high school, works at Texas Oncology. So, of course, I immediately called her, sure. and she jumped into action and said, you know, come come see us. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where it's how I ended up there. Right. Right. So is that an area that you're <coughs> specializing in with cervical cancer or just all kinds of cancers? So uh, we are pretty much utility infielders in Waco. So we all yeah. see a little bit of everything, right. and we work – uh, with gynecologic cancers, we work in conjunction with gynecologic oncologists who are who are the oncologists, surgical oncologists who specialize in cancers of gynecologic origin. And so uh, we work hand in hand with them to try to help deliver the care locally. Mm -hmm. and, th and this was a journey you started what, 10 years ago. 2016 is, is in November of 2016. Yeah, and, and that involved a lot of chemotherapy? It oh, did. Okay. I actually <clears throat> started with internal radiation, then we Ooh. did chemo and radiation, then we did follow it up with another round of chemo at the end, so it was pretty intense, and that, all of that was new at that time. I, you know, I had never experienced anything like that, so um, it was, yeah, it was a pretty intense journey. Right, right, but uh, you've been described um, as an amazing patient by she yourself. Is. Tough as nails. <laughs> That's right, because you never missed any school. 
I mean, you never, you never well, took a sick day never, off. Yeah, never for sick. Now for I sick. had to have to miss for treatment. Well, yeah, exactly. Or for visits, but yes, I never. You know, and people would ask, "Well, did you, did you take some time off, or you know, did you stay home?" But I just felt like if I stayed home, all I would have to do is sit around and think about the fact that I was sick. But you know, when you're a high school teacher, you don't have time to think about anything like that when you're at work. So those kids keep you busy. Yeah, they keep you young, entertained, and so. I wanted to be at school each day because that, you know, it's where I needed to be. And um, I also think part of it was because, I mean, my first diagnosis, my son was in seventh grade. My daughter was a sophomore um, at the high school where I Mm -hmm. work. And so for me, it was really important that they didn't view me as being sick. You know, it was just mom's still doing her normal thing. She's at work. She's teaching. We see her there. And I wanted their lives to stay as normal as possible so correct yeah and of course your daughter i'm though i know she was drawn in to the medical Mm aspect and and how wants to have her career as a yeah and she and she actually told them that at her interview that you know that kind of sparked her sophomore year you know she would come to me come with me sometimes and um just seeing how important a nurse is in a patient's treatment you know that how the those nurses treat their patients and you know looking at it from the aspect of a daughter of a patient, you know, she wanted to make a difference like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she, and she is going to, um, a little bit about you, Dr. Chuck Majin, where, where are you from? And tell me about your, what kind of led you to this career? So, uh, born and raised in Dallas Uh and, uh, came to uh, Baylor, uh, and, and, uh, then went to a medical school in Fort Worth. And I had planned on a different career, and I was doing my internal medicine residency. And uh, one of my buddies, is, he he said, Carl, it, we, I remember we were on, I was on call at the uh, Temple VA, and we were on call in the call room that night. And he said, uh, you're going to switch to oncology. This and this is like you know this is what's meant for you. And I was like, whatever, really? man. I, yeah, <laughs> and um, he was right, and I did, and. And I really feel like I'm where I need to be. It's, yeah. So straight out of training, came back uh, to Waco 18 years ago and joined Texas Oncology there. And that's where I am today. Yeah, I understand you have a brother also a physician? Is um, where? My brother is a, is a dentist in Dallas, but I have a double first cousin who's okay. a pediatrician in Waco. Okay, so with the same last name. He's pretty much a brother, yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, I, I'd heard that. I thought, well, that's, you know, yeah. it's... Our dads are married to twin sisters, so... Oh, my goodness. Kind of like two <laughs> sets of parents. That's amazing. So what is it about this field of medicine that, you know, you felt like this is right for you? This is... Is it is it the research and the new treatments or? Yeah, so oncology is, is great in, in so many regards. Uh, uh, the, the best part about me are the, I mean are the patients. I mean there's people like yeah. Amy, right? And um, and they come and they fight and they're really an inspiration. Yeah. And so I mean to me the best part are the patients. I love and one thing for me just scientifically that drew me to oncology is there's a lot of active clinical research that you don't have uh, access to. I, I just don't feel like in other areas of medicine. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we always try to keep uh, a, a handful of trials open uh, in Waco. And, we're, and we can do that just because we're part of a bigger network. And so uh, that we can have uh, exposure to drugs that are investigational and that, that change the future for treatment. And so I love the clinical aspect of research with oncology. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, I think it's the, the patients and, and, and the clinical research were the two big draws for mm-hmm. me. So has Amy been a part of, of any of the research trials? or? I don't think you have been in a trial. No, I haven't been, been in a trial. Mm-hmm. So, and you have been her physician or through this aspect of her treatment for a long time? How long? The whole time. Yes, oh, really? 2016. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, goodness. We time. talk about him like he's family. I, I mean, was going to say, he so, might yeah. as well We just be. talk about Dr. Chalk, you know. Everybody knows <laughs> who he is and, you know, just yeah. part of the family. Yeah, yeah. So so the treatment for her particular cancer and you say, started out with the uh, radiation, mm-hmm. and then you went to an oral or an IV, or how did, how did they do the An chemo? IV, yeah. Each time it's been an <clears throat> IV, and so... You know, unfortunately, um, you know, it wasn't a one and done. So after 2016, um, you know, we went through all that. And that following June of 2017, 
we were finished with treatment and the next um, March of 2018 it came back in a lymph node um, by my collarbone so we had that removed and mm -hmm. we did chemo and radiation again and then um, in 2022 it came back again in my lung and so we did chemo and radiation again and then in 2023 it came back again and so at that point I shouldn't be talking like I'm a doctor but if I'm correct you've once, you've radiated, <laughs> once you've radiated an area you can't do it you can't radiate it again oh, yeah. right, right. right. So radiation wasn't an option, so we just did chemo. Mm -hmm. And then we actually just found out, I had you know the cough and um, out of breath and all of that came back in um, kind of in January. And so we had um, a thoracentesis and had a lung drained and we had that fluid tested and it's back again. So next Friday, I'll actually start my fifth battle and we're going to do it again, right? We're going to do it again. So A fighter, as you say, though, um, and you haven't let it define you. Correct, yes. What What does that mean? I mean, how, how do you um, I think it's that? just, you know, it it's kind of secondary in my life. You know, I don't focus on it. It's, um, you know, it's just something to do. I mean, I go to school, and then I'll run after school and do my blood work at Texas Oncology and get it done right quick. Mm -hmm. and. And treatment days are usually on Fridays, and um, luckily this year we're off on Fridays, so it hasn't That's affected. Right. Yeah, they it's started really a nice. new, right. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's just one of those things you check off your list and yeah. you get it done and move on with the other more important fun mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. in life. Yeah, going to a football game. That's right, going to Washington play football. You have football. to go, go to, to see some kids. Lamar football. That's right. <clears throat> well, uh, I, I know it's been a life-changing you know for mm -hmm. your for your family what kind of sustains you through this besides your grit and determination um and in school i mean yeah, I know you enjoy I mean, you yeah. enjoy your work I think obviously. a combination yeah my my family and then yeah just kind of my per and you know i might give myself more importance but i feel like my kids at school need me i mean i have right. i teach ap english so we're preparing for an exam that they'll take on may 14th and so you know, I feel like if I'm not there, they can't, they're not going to be ready. So, you know, I'm constantly getting trained, watching new um, training videos, preparing new lessons so that we can be, um, you know, I can be the best teacher possible to, to get them ready for where they need to be. And um, that's kind of my focus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sure there are other doctors you've consulted with on her case. I mean, uh, about how many people total have been involved in her her journey so far physician wise uh radiation the radiation doctor obviously mm -hmm. and then gynecologic oncologist and then my i'm the chemo doctor mm -hmm. uh, the one everybody hates and so uh uh but i mean pretty much three of us kind of uh working together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this has been um, something that you know you're very upbeat about and optimistic that you know but this is one more hurdle right to. absolutely just look at it as well we've done this we've done it four times we can do it one more time and you know <laughs> texas oncology is great like i said we we laugh because we talk about him all the time like he's one of the family but you know at texas oncology when you've been there as long as i have you know everybody and you feel comfortable there and yeah. you know all the people are so kind and you know anytime you have a problem or a question they they answer it for you immediately so it's you know it's not a scary process because you feel comfortable with those people right and you know that yeah, they're so often you hear you. well if you get this you, you got to go to MD Anderson we got to go to Houston and mm -hmm. that's really not true right that's a, yeah I mean so MD Anderson obviously is a great yeah, academic right. institution it's, 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 yeah. and, and um is. and the bulk of cancer care i mean we take care of i would i would estimate probably about 90 percent of cancer stuff mm -hmm. at uh, texas oncology in waco and there are some rare things that people do need to go out of right. town for it's if, if there's a rare cancer that's there's three cases in texas a year and those three cases are seen by a doctor in dallas or houston well then they need to go to dallas or houston and and uh but our but our mission is to try to is to deliver not to try hopefully to deliver high quality care close to home and if, so if we see somebody and it's not something we do we say hey you need to go to 
this doctor in Dallas or this doctor in Houston or Austin or whatever. Um, but if it's something that we do and we do a lot, uh, we just take care of it here and so that hopefully people's lives can be as normal as possible. They can continue with their job, their exercise routine. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're like a big runner too, right, Amy? Mm -hmm. Oh, tell me about that. Uh, I tried. I, no, oh, I, my, been I, get, I get out of breath. That's I what I been get out of breath. <laughs> since, yeah, since, since it came into my lungs and the, the breathing's been difficult, mm -hmm. but... I would love to get back to it for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, what other you know kind of hobbies or things do you you like to cook? I mean, has um, has this affected you know your appetite and all that? Sort well, of thing? yeah. When during treatment, a lot of times it does. So what do I want to eat? Exactly. You know? It it affects it, weird. You have weird cravings, and you don't like things that you used to like. Oh, really? Yeah. So that that's always strange, but. Um, you know, like I said, with both my kids being gone now, we're empty nesters, so that was that was a weird transition. Sure. I, I actually went into mourning for a little while when my son graduated, oh, but we're kind of getting used to things now. And so um, we have a German Shepherd that we take on walks every night and, you know, just cooking and reading. I love to read. Mm -hmm. I have time. When I'm not grading papers, I love to read. So, yeah. All English. Uh, yeah. English <laughs> <teacher. laughs> You're reading, <laughs> writing, grading. Well, now when you were in school, did you, did you always kind of know you wanted to be a teacher? Is that? I did. I think in high school, um, I had a really good English teacher in high school and I just, I can There's remember. something about those English yeah, teachers. I know. I remember sitting just, there thinking, that's what yeah. I want to do. You know, look at her. Yeah. I want to yeah. do that. And so, yeah, I was, I took that traditional path with when I graduated. And that's, you know, I knew that's what I wanted to do and stuck with it. Yeah. Well, I, I was able to see the uh, lovely piece that uh, Julie Hayes did at Channel 10 yeah. earlier in the month um, with you both. And, you know, it, it was just so, so beautifully done as she talked about uh, your career and mm -hmm. just your, your. I keep saying grit and determination, but but just the the strength and courage that you've shown in the face of this to not just crawl off in the corner and curl up and right, you know. Yeah, and I think that right. I really think being a teacher helps. You know, just because you feel like you have, it's not just a regular job no. that you go to you know that <laughs> that's true when you go to school you got to be on you know 24 7 and but like I said the kids they're so much fun and they make you laugh and every day is a new day you never know what's going to happen and so um, I think that helps a right. lot as well right right and in a community a close-knit community oh absolutely like China, China Springs and I mean they're they're all family and you know the, at this point after teaching there's I mean in some families I've taught all four of their children and say. yeah it's they're, they're <laughs> have you been there long enough to, you haven't been there long enough to start <laughs> teaching their kids but uh, i have a friend who didn't yet. teach that right long. <laughs> but yeah they're so everybody's so supportive so it's it's a great place to yeah be. yeah well i'm i'm sure there there really has been a lot of a lot of support mm -hmm. folks Absolutely. you know if you needed meals or whatever yes. they're ready to step in and they have been. Yeah. Church family, the same kind of Yeah, thing. it's kind of the same kind of way of just, I mean, really from all different. Um, when, when my kids were still in high school, um, you know, Raylan's volleyball team, Braden's a baseball team, um, you know, just different groups of parents, just, you know, people who have taught their kids, just, you know, people, like you said, bringing by food, um, you know, things that you need, asking if – not that necessarily need anything, but always asking, you know, can, right, can right. we what help What can I do for you? Is yeah. there anything you need? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, it's, I think it's important for others to be able to serve you that way, too. Yeah, that's very nice. It's a, a blessing for them as well. Um, so so what, are you, what are your thoughts, Dr. Chuck? Is that what we're going to call you? <laughs> Dr. Chuck Majian, yes. um, on On this next phase of her treatment. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, when... When we're treating with something with certain drugs and the cancer changes, then we've got to change. And so mm -hmm. that's all we're doing. We're going to pivot to uh, a new different, uh, just a different type of drug than her cancer has been exposed to. And, um, and we're going to change up our attack, our plan of attack, and, and try to get this thing beat back down. Yeah, yeah. And so you really just do blood work or how do you, how do you monitor that? Yeah. The well, cat, well, we do. Ha we have to check blood counts mm -hmm. regularly and kidney mm -hmm. and liver and all that stuff because sure. of side effects from the medicines. But we monitor the progression of the disease with CAT scans. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, your scans. your health is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you have had a lot of chemicals, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, and she's, I mean, you can tell just by listening to her. And by the way, you aren't underestimating your importance. I mean, you are important <laughs> to your kids and, and, oh, and, gosh, and those yeah. students. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, she's just a go-getter. Uh, uh, Mark, her husband, super, super guy, always there supporting her. So she's got great support. And, mm-hmm. and uh, like I said, she's tough as nails. She doesn't <laughs> complain. She just comes in, takes care of business, and goes on with life. And I think one thing that she said that's super important is, that she's keeping her life as normal as possible is really important to people's success when they're undergoing treatment for cancer because uh, Amy is exactly correct. When you sit home, you get this list of these are all the possible side effects of these drugs and you're used to being busy and then you go home and like, I'm not, I'm going to, you know, go and I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to stop my life because I want to be prepared to fight. But then you, people are used to doing Mm -hmm. and then you sit there and you're looking at this list and then everything on the list starts happening right and so uh so i think the the choices that she's made has really helped her has really helped her excuse me i better speak proper english here (laughs) (laughs) well you know that and that's important and and that's why i'm just i'm just awestruck at at your story and your willingness i got i got to thinking with all the hippo laws i think here i've got a doctor and a patient talking about (laughs) that would be such top secret you can't talk. Right. you know but it but it is such a help mm-hmm. to other people that might find themselves in a similar situation and right. how you've you've you know just taken this head on yeah well and like you said i mean that's kind of what you know when i was talking to julie hayes kind of the message we want to get out is you know when i did finally go to the doctor you know i was the busy mom that only focused on her kids and i hadn't been to the doctor and probably three or four I years, know. maybe longer. I, you know, I didn't oh, you ever d- go You didn't have myself. a cold or whatever. Right, you, know, you, you don't know. go to the doctor unless you're sick. Right, so, you don't go unless you're sick. Um, you know, that's definitely a message mm-hmm. for women is to, you know, take the time for yourself, get those um, exams those, done. and Right, you know, yeah. Because the breast it can make a difference. Those things, yeah. yeah. Because it, it is. It's very easy to. Well, the last time you had a mammogram was seven years ago. Right. And just time yeah, gets no, away from you no, and you forget. Right. So right. Yeah. Are. Early detection is absolutely the key. Right. So, right. yeah. So that's why I mean, really appreciate Amy doing this because I'm sure it's hard to talk about all this. But, I mean, it, it can really save women's lives and, and, and uh, you know, starting in your early 20s, going to get your uh, pap, you know, every few years, every three years mm-hmm. or so. Uh, just staying on top of things and and uh, for parents who are listening or I mean cervical cancer is, is uh, associated with the virus and uh, a lot of times and we have vaccines that can help prevent that mm-hmm. now that yeah so you recommend that I, I wonder Absolutely, about the H, yeah. uh, what is it the HPV virus? yeah HPV virus mm-hmm. causes uh, more than 90 percent of cervical cancer cases really yeah. and um, and it's so it's just prevalent uh, uh, just depending on the numbers you look at up to 50 percent of the population are carriers for uh, HPV. And so, mm-hmm. and they don't all cause cancer. Uh, and they, some cause this type of cancer, some cause that type of cancer. But there's a vaccine uh, that, that wasn't available when we were younger, but starting at around the age 11 now, at age 11, uh, and uh, that you can get it's a two series shots and mm-hmm. uh, two se- series of shots. Through and obviously, this is just for girls. Doctor. No, actually, it's not. Regardless of gender, yeah. Oh, really? And so okay. uh, HPV is also associated with oropharyngeal cancers um, and uh, other types of cancers. So uh, regardless of your gender, the vaccine is recommended now, starting around the age of 11 for uh, all comers. Mm. Wow. And, so and you can prevent, I mean, so I think yeah. really in 20 years, I mean, a lot of cervical cancer could be extinct because of the, va- uh, because of the vaccine. Wow. Well, great advice. Great advice. You both have been so awesome. I thank you so much for the time you've shared with us today and uh, wish you all the best in your journey and pray that God would continue to have his hand on your life and you would, you know, beat this next phase. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for and, having uh, us. And, and Dr. Chuck Magian, thank you so much for the, just the, the service you give to Central Texas. Well, absolutely. This is what makes it worth it right here. (laughs) Amy. I can see that. Thank you both so much. Thank you for being with us for Central Texas Life. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder is part of the Rogue Media family. Be sure to check out our other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. 
Please rate this show five stars on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. This has been a Rogue Media Network 